Welcome to the SBI Podcast, offering CEOs, sales and marketing leaders ideas to make the number. Welcome SBI Podcast listeners and video podcast viewers. My name is John Staples and I'm a partner at SBI, a sales and marketing consultancy dedicated to helping you make your number. With me today is one of SBI's principals, Mark Sinek. What's up, Mark? Happy to be here with you, John. All righty. The goal of our show is to help you make your number by speaking with sales and marketing ex experts on topics that include market research, corporate product, marketing, sales, and talent strategies. I'm excited for our audience to hear from today's guest, Jill Raleigh. She's a rock star in the world of social selling and the founder of Hashtag Social Selling. Jill has 20 years of experience as a social selling evangelist, modern marketing expert, and change agent at companies such as Oracle, Eloqua, Salesforce.com, and Navigate Consulting. Jill is an advisory board member at TrackMaven, Data RPM, and an advisor at HubSpot and A Company. Let me review a few more reasons why you might want to pay attention to Jill's advice today. Her awards and honors include top 30 social sales influencers in the world for 2014, top 25 B2B sales influencers for 2014, one of the top 23 thought-provoking enterprise tech executives that smart people are following on Twitter. Jill, is that a real award? <laughs> It is real. It is true. <laughs> well, it goes on. Winner of the 2013 Sales Representative of the Year, 2013 20 Women to Watch in Sales Lead Management Award, 2012 winner of the 50 Most Influential People in Sales Lead Management. And again, folks, that's just a quick overview. I think it's fair to say Jill is an expert in her field. So, Jill, officially, welcome to the show. I am really excited to be here. Thanks for having me, John and Mark. Fantastic. So today we're going to discuss how buyer behavior has changed and how social selling increases new logo acquisition and cross-sell and upsell revenue within your existing accounts. Now to do that, we're going to use a section of SBI's revenue growth methodology to guide our conversation. Specifically, phase three, pages 44 and 45 to start. If you want to follow along at home, you can download a copy of our methodology at www.salesbenchmarkindex.com forward slash 2016 dash report. Okay, great. All right, let's jump right into it, Jill. Can we, can we start with you telling us how buyers have changed over the last five years from your perspective? Absolutely. So the buyer has changed more in the past 10 years than in the past 100 uh, the buying process has changed more in the past decade than the past 100 years. The buying committee and the makeup of the buying committee has changed. Um, the, the modern buyer, uh, she's digitally driven. 92% of B2B buyers start their search on the web. She's socially connected, uh, LinkedIn, Twitter, other social networks. The modern buyer has... Uh, multiple mobile devices, and she's empowered. She has nearly unlimited access to not only information, but to people, her peers, her colleagues, her competitors, uh, uh, and even the smarty pants people in her industry, the analysts, the subject matter experts, the thought leaders. So, so the buying environment has drastically changed and transformed. And it's important that as sales professionals and marketing professionals that we truly understand how our buyers buy today. That's uh, the 92% the statistic you just threw out, 92% of B2B purchasers begin their, their search uh, on the web is fascinating, uh, largely because of the extent to which it's gone up over the last two or three years even. I mean, you've seen it dramatically increase, correct? Dramatically, and not only starting the purchase process on the web, but the, the stat from CEB is that 67% of the buying process is being done 
digitally. Actually, that might be Serious Decisions or CEB. I love both of those analyst firms from a sales and marketing expertise perspective. Mm-hmm. But 67, a larger percentage of that buying process is being done digitally. So what approaches do you use or do you advise clients to use to determine what that percentage is and how buyers make purchase decisions in their industry? Because I think it must vary a bit from industry to industry, old line business services, for example, compared to technology industry. Is that, is that correct or do you see That's something very else? very fair to say. Okay. Absolutely correct. Um, the trend lines are going up and to the right. So more people are digitally uh, active, socially engaged in more social networks and, and on mobile devices, and they're spending more time in those networks. So all of the, the general data is up and to the right. But at an industry level, it absolutely varies in terms of the number of people and the extent to which they're relying on the digital and social networks. So I think market research is really important. So looking at the external market research, but then really looking at your customers, finding out are your customers, look at the last 10, 20 customers that you brought on and go and look at where they are in the social world and, and, and what kinds of uh, digital assets are they leveraging to, to self-educate, to, to learn on their own. I say buyers are having learning parties without inviting salespeople to the party. Mm. So, hey, based on the environment, uh, Jill, you just described, from your perspective, what do best-in-class sales teams do to succeed in this environment? Two things. Know thy buyer. Truly understand thy buyer. Understand the ideal customer profile, right? Who is the best fit buyer and work with those companies. And the best fit are the ones that you can generate massive value for. It it isn't just, though, who you know in sales. It's what you know about who you know. And social networks offer a tremendous Uh, resource for sales professionals to do research on the buyer so that they can be more relevant to the buyer, so they can build better relationships with the buyer. Social networks, unlike social media, social networks layer on three things. So so this makes it much more valuable to the salesperson than social media. Social networks layer on identity, who John Staples is, where you live. You live in Denver. Wow, you were the 2013 Employee of the Year. You have a give-to-give mentality. You went to the Maine Maritime Academy. So your identity, who you are, where you live, what your skills are. The second thing is relationships. To whom are you connected? You and I, John, we have 71 shared connections. I'm looking to connect the dots. I'm looking to be more relevant and closer to your world, so, so your relationships. And then the third thing from social that sales professionals can get are interest. And the interests are based on uh, your, your, your profile, your, the, the information that you share, the people that you engage with, the tweets that you favorite. So, John, I know you're into skiing and mountain biking, but, Mark, I know that you're into golf. So these social networks really provide an invaluable resource for sales professionals to really understand, to find their buyers, to listen, relate to their buyers, connect and engage with their buyers. You know, that, that's, that's great. The um, question I think our audience might be having because we're across 19 different verticals, but uh, in your experience, does industry matter? It, it actually, it, it does. I will say, you know, I'm not the one out there saying everybody needs to rush to social selling. Everybody needs to transform their sales organization to do all social all the time. I'm actually not even saying that the phone is dead and that email servers are being shut down. What I am saying is understand the role that social and digital play in your buyer's uh, education and buying process. 
look at it through the eyes of your customer, and and uh, if your buyers are in social, and and the large percentage of professionals are actually on LinkedIn. There are 380 million uh, professionals on LinkedIn globally. I actually say, if you're not on LinkedIn, you don't exist to me. I mean, what are you thinking? Right now, today, we're not first meeting people face to face. We're meeting them after a Google search. We're meeting them after they look up uh, uh, someone on on LinkedIn. So I I think it does vary by industry. I think that uh, tech um, is definitely uh, the the early adopter and and the most uh, socially engaged. I also think it varies by role within an organization. We see more uh, marketers using social uh, than we see uh, uh, engineering or or legal maybe. But but it, don't discount it. Go just like you recommend to go get the data and validate it. Don't. Don't think just because you're not socially active that your buyers aren't. Mm -hmm. I think that's incredibly insightful for our uh, guests uh, and audience. Let's take a short break and make the audience aware of one of SBI's offerings. You are watching SBI TV. This is a monthly web TV show featuring guests just like you, executives trying to grow their revenues. Each month, you can peek behind the scenes and watch your peers discuss their strategies for how they make their numbers. You are not going to want to miss this. Welcome back. My name is John Staples and I'm a partner at SBI and I'm joined by my co-host Mark Sinek, a principal at SBI. Our guest today is Jill Raleigh, the founder of Hashtag Social Selling. Today we're discussing social selling and its impact on the modern sales organization. We are using SBI's revenue growth methodology to guide our discussion. We are now going to discuss phase three of the sales strategy section titled Prospecting on pages 163 and 164. Before the break, Jill shared with us her perspective on how buyers have changed and what sales teams need to do to be best in class when it comes to understanding our buyers. During this next segment, we're going to hear from Jill on what great prospecting looks like and how social prospecting can help you make your number. Jill, can you explain to our audience what does a buyer want from us when they are early in the decision process? I can tell you what they don't want. So I speak to sales organizations and at conferences all the time. And a question that I ask, who in the room likes to be cold called? And invariably, I get one person who raises their hand. There might be 200 people, there might be 2,000 people. One person raises their hand. And I say, what's your name? Mary. Mary, what's your phone number? And everyone <laughs> giggles. The reality is that buyers don't want to be cold called and they don't want to receive unsolicited, generic, pitchy, pitchy, selly, selly emails. Sales teams are executing an old play. They're doing email call, email call, email call, and the buyer is doing delete, ignore, delete, ignore, delete, ignore. Cold calling and unsolicited generic emails are not getting through. Nobody wants to be sold to, but everyone is open to being helped. And so the best in class sales professionals think about how can I help my buyer? How can I help them become aware of either a problem that they, that they kind of knew they had, but they didn't realize how big the problem was? How can they become aware of a solution to a problem that they know they have, but they don't know how to solve? How can they become aware of, of change, changes in, the, in, the, in their world, in their environment? An example would be millennials. The world's workforce is getting younger. 
And by 2020, 50% of the world's workforce will be millennials. By 2025, 75% of the world's workforce will be millennials. They're digital natives. They, in their generation, they're, they're, they're born collaborative. They're born sharing. They're born living their lives out loud on the web. But in my generation, in the generation of a lot of sales leaders like myself, collaboration was called cheating. And so what is really, what we have to do is we know that the traditional methods are less and less and less and less and less effective. So let's not try to get better at less effective methods. Let's think about how can we be where our buyers are early in their decision process, which they're doing it on the web. They're, they're asking their peers in social networks. They're not actually waiting for your references. They're actually checking out people who have bought your product uh, earlier in their buying journey. So you need to be there as a sales professional adding value, uh, sharing, sharing information that would provide insight, that would help them see um, uh, how they can actually solve the problem, the, the return on investment for solving the problem. So, so being where they are early in the buying process and being helpful. Let's pivot a little bit if we could and think about the topic of generating mm -hmm. leads and kind of how it relates to what we're discussing today. So. What types of social selling programs do you advise clients to implement to generate more leads? Sure. It, it is really about, uh, one, um, from a social selling perspective, what you're doing is you're activating your sales professionals uh, to be in these social networks and leveraging these social networks to, to find, right? So, so first and foremost, LinkedIn is a database of 380 million professionals. So I can go into LinkedIn and I can sort. I can sort based on uh, uh, industry. I can sort based on uh, location. I can sort based on size of company. I can sort uh, within that at a, at a contact level. I can sort based on uh, function, uh, skill type. Uh, there's there's all sorts of things you can you can sort on within LinkedIn. So your sales team needs to learn how to. Um, understand that the database functionality of LinkedIn to actually be able to to find and to build prospecting lists although I don't really like the word prospect but um, I, I, I nobody wants to be prospected your buyers don't want to be hunted and farmed they don't want to be a target in your database um, they want to be helped and so um, but but from building that that list of companies that fit your ideal customer profile, and then, and then looking for the people within those companies that fit the, either the title or the skill set of, of your typical buyer or someone who would be part of the buying process. So salespeople need to learn how to, to leverage the power of, one, LinkedIn, but also Twitter is an incredible network. If, if your buyers are on Twitter, you need to learn how to use the network. I'm not saying you actually have to become an active tweeter, but you need to be able to go to Twitter and find that person, see who they're following, see who follows them, see what they're, what they're, what they're tweeting about. And, and that's, that's research. So there's, there's modern day research that sales professionals need to learn how to do to do modern day uh, prospecting, if you will. You know, my brain keeps coming back to a statistic you've cited twice since we've been speaking, and this is this 380 million people on LinkedIn. And I recall clearly putting a presentation together for a client probably 15 months ago, and the number at that time was 255 million. So the explosion in people who are now using these tools that they didn't even really have awareness of, you know, a couple of years ago is, is amazing. I'd like to take a short break, another short break if we could, and make the audience aware of another of SBI's content offerings. Jill, we'll be right back. Making your number is hard. Your problems are complex. Complex problems need complex solutions. Introducing the SBI Magazine. Read in-depth stories written by award-winning journalists about how your peers have overcome their problems to make the numbers. When you need more than a tweet, social post, or blog article, turn to the SBI Magazine. 
Go to salesbenchmarkindex.com to subscribe. Welcome back. Mark and I are joined by Jill Rowley, founder of Hashtag Social Selling. Today we're discussing how social selling gets us the meetings with the buying decision teams where you, and we're using SBI's revenue growth methodology to guide our discussion. We're still working in the prospecting section, pages 163 and 164. During this next segment, we're gonna hear from Jill on what great prospecting looks like when it's fully adopted by an organization. And Jill, I know you said you don't like the term prospecting, so if there's another term you'd like to use here, we can, we can certainly uh, supplement it. Well, I don't call them prospects. I call them future advocates. Future advocates of my product, my company, and of me. But, uh, uh, you know, building a, a pipeline of, of rich future advocates. It's The prospecting is a word that's in the language, and uh, we can stick with it for today. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. All right, let's jump back in here. Jill, how are we going to get the sales team to adopt the prospecting programs that we're trying to implement? Always a difficult question to answer. It's, it's really difficult. It's, it's, it's really three things, and in this order. It's mindset. So the mindset of the modern sales professional who is trying to get the attention of the digitally driven, socially connected, mobile, empowered, overwhelmed buyer who really doesn't have time uh, for something new uh, is 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 reticent to um, take on additional risk within the organization. Uh, you're you're competing with with status quo. Um, the 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 way that 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 mindset. Uh, really, to be able to earn the trust and the and the visibility and the time of that modern buyer, you have to be in it to help the buyer, to help them solve their business problems, achieve uh, whatever goals they're trying to uh, accomplish. It, it can't be a mindset of always be closing, always be selling. It can't be that that pounce and pitch uh, mindset. So first and foremost, you have to think about it and everything that you do from the perspective of how am I, how am I helping my buyer? So from that perspective, then, how do you use digital and social networks to, to show your buyer that you can help? One of the key pillars of social selling is content. And if I think about content, I think about reading what my buyers read, the, the, the publications, the journals, listening to the podcast, watching the, the videos, uh, subscribing to the magazines that my buyers read, and sharing that content across my social networks. So that, that has to be part of the rhythm of the routine, of the behavior of the modern sales professional, because buyers are using the web and social networks to self-educate. And the way that your sales organization can become more visible and relevant to this digitally driven buyer is by sharing insightful content. And not just your company branded content, but third party content, thought leadership content, content from the subject matter experts in your buyer's world. So, so content is a really key component. And not even just, you know, one of the things I've, I'm, I'm really challenging uh, salespeople who are a little bit further advanced in the social selling journey is, is if your buyer has shown interest in a particular uh, topic, uh, let's say gender diversity. An example would be Telstra's CEO uh, has a, he published an article on LinkedIn about gender diversity. I read a, a report on gender diversity, and instead of uh, uh, me sharing a piece of content with the CEO on social selling, I shared a piece of content with him on gender diversity. So it doesn't necessarily even have to be 
selly content or even related to what you sell, but it can be content that helps build a better relationship with the buyer. That's why it's not just who you know, it's what you know about who you know, so that you can be more helpful to to the buyer. Let's talk for a moment, if we could, about metrics. And, you know, sales leadership loves to track metrics and especially activity metrics. And I think sometimes they're a little bit uncomfortable about the new, call it social prospecting process, mm -hmm. because it's not as easy to track metrics using LinkedIn or Twitter or an external source like that as it is if I'm having people call through my own CRM. So do you have any thought about how leadership's attitude about tracking metrics needs to change? It has to change. Or we're going to keep doing the things that are easy to measure, that don't work, to, to help us accomplish the business goal, which is growing revenue. And not only growing revenue, but, but creating really happy customers that are willing to be really your best salespeople aren't even on your payroll. Your best salespeople are your customers because they're the most uh, trusted resource of your, of your future buyers. So the metrics that we measure have to change. And there are new metrics being created. We're, we're charting new territory right now. We are, we are definitely figuring out, okay, call, email, call, email, call, email, talk time. Reps have figured out how to fake all of that. Like literally when I was at Oracle, reps would tell me how they were uh, faking the whole system because they were being measured on stupid metrics that wasn't helping them make their number. And so um, it is harder. Uh, do you, do you uh, look at a sales professional's uh, number of connections on LinkedIn? Well, it, you might, that might lead to bad behavior, right? They might just go out and make a bunch of connections that aren't really quality connections. Um, do you do it based on the, the volume of content that they share? Well, that might lead to bad behavior. They might share um, the wrong content. So th there is a metric that LinkedIn has come up with that, I like, but it is very LinkedIn-centric. It's called the, the SSI, the Social Selling Index. Um, and I like it because it's directional. It, and it, and you, can, you can monitor and measure it over time. And, and you can Google LinkedIn Social Selling Index and find out more about it. But the metric that ultimately really matters in sales, the rubber meets the road with revenue. And, and the behavior over time, moving away from traditional methods into new methods, you have to get pretty good at tracking that new activity. And this means, okay, in my CRM system, I need to track lead source as LinkedIn or Twitter, or maybe it's a community site where your buyers are active, or maybe it's a, a group, um, a, 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 an online group that your buyers are members of, that your salespeople become members of. So ultimately, the, the, the rubber meets the road with revenue, and we need to start to track different sources. But um, this is, a, it, this is a, it's a hard area. I get it. I get why sales leaders are hesitant to, to, to stop measuring the things that are easy to measure. Yeah, well said. Jill, we're going to take one more short break to make the audience aware of one of SBI's offerings. We'll speak with you in just a moment. Each day, you receive hundreds of emails, tons of text messages, countless telephone calls, and sit in too many meetings. How do you find ideas to make the number with all this noise? The SBI blog filters all this nonsense for you and presents only first-rate ideas to make the number. Simplify your life. Subscribe to one blog and read the best content. Go to salesbenchmarkindex.com and subscribe today. Welcome back, everyone. In our final segment, we're going to summarize the discussion and provide some action items for you to apply in your business today to help you make your number. Jill, let's put a bow on this. I would like you to speak directly to the audience and explain what are the top three things you recommend our audience do immediately following this show to help them make their number. First and foremost, to determine whether social selling is an initiative that you should uh, start down the process or invest more in, 
think about it from a business case perspective. Go out and, and gather research on whether social selling is, is working, um, which it is. I can uh, shorten your, your time on that. There's analyst reports and uh, proof uh, studies of companies doing this and individuals being successful. But, but do the work up front. Get that business case because you're going to need that to get the cross-functional buy-in to really invest in the necessary transformation. So do the research, develop the business case for why your organization should either start investing or invest more heavily in social selling. So once you have that business case, you need to have a plan. You need a very strong change agent within your organization who can work with both marketing sales, and then really, it, it, it's like a, a, an enablement person that sits between marketing and sales who can be the, the champion of, of this transformation because it's going to require a lot of new skills and behavior development and, 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 and learning from your sales team. So once you identify who that real strong change agent and champion is within the organization that can align the, the, the cross-functional team to, to put together a real best-in-class program, the, the, the next thing you need to invest in is training. A fool with a tool is still a fool. And so don't go out and, and buy, you know, a bunch of licenses for LinkedIn Sales Navigator without having a plan in place on how you're going to deliver in a modern learning environment the new skills, how you're going to coach to those new skills, how you're going to create a, a, an environment of sharing success stories uh, among your team. So, so training is an a really important component to drive that behavioral change in these new skills, leveraging these new tools that your sales team likely needs to adopt. Great advice from a true expert in social selling. What does all this mean to you, the audience? It means your sales team needs to keep pace with the profession of selling. The modern buyer persona and buyer process maps are table stakes. If your team doesn't have social selling skills, you're not keeping pace with the market, and more than likely, you'll miss your number. If you want to make sure you get this right, get a copy of SBI's annual research report called How to Make Your Number in 2016. You can get it at salesbenchmarkindex.com forward slash 2016 dash report. Now, if you're interested in learning more about social prospecting and specifically where does product and marketing fit into the mix, we can have one of our experts lead you through a workshop which will detail how to use this and how to do it. Go to www.salesbenchmarkindex.com to request a workshop. Jill, thanks for sharing your perspective with our audience. We really appreciate it. And our audience has benefited greatly from it. And I also want to take a moment and thank the audience for tuning in. This show has become very popular. And with this popularity comes great guests like the one we had today. So. Thank you, Jill. Thank you, audience. And we wish you much success as you try and make your number. This has been the SBI Podcast. For more information on SBI services, case studies, the SBI team and how we work, or to subscribe to our other offerings, please visit us at salesbenchmarkindex.com.